Hey everyone, uh, welcome to your 12th, uh, no, 13th, I think, uh, Java game development tutorial episode. Uh, if you remember last time, we made it so that our player could jump, so to speak. Only problem, I mean, you see we move left and right, we collide with the ground and everything. Only problem is, you know, you press jump, and you jump up in the air. But if you were to press jump while you're in the air, you can still jump, because we don't detect whether we're touching the ground yet. Uh, and also, actually, if you hold down jump, you shoot like a rocket, see? Because it'll ju keep jumping as long as you're holding the key, so slight problem. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of both of those. Uh, the first one we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to rework the way I'm doing the collisions, because this is fine and everything, but you notice we cast our positions and our sizes uh, from floats, which are, you know, precise, very precise with decimal points and all that, to integers, which is what the rectangle class needs and what our graphics need to be drawn in because, you know, it's converted to pixels and pixels are whole numbers. There's no such thing as half a pixel, for example. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a little method here for doing collisions. It's going to be a private uh, boolean uh, does collide. Okay. And what it's going to take is it's going to take uh, a float we'll call it x, and a float that we'll call y. And these are going to be the effective uh, x and y positions of our object. What's going to happen is it's going to basically say, if our object were at position x and y, would it be colliding with anything? So we could tell if we're colliding with anything right now where we are by passing in our pose x and pose y values. And we can tell whether we are uh, whether we'll collide, you know, if we were to move forward a, uh, one unit by passing in our pose x plus 1 or something like that. Um, so it's going to return true if we if we would be colliding at that location and false if we would not be colliding at that location. So we're going to uh, start by creating a few floats here. Float my, uh, my left, this is going to be the left side of our imaginary colliding box, uh, is equal to x minus width divided by 2, okay? Because uh, if x is at the center, then half of the width to the left, which is negative, uh, is going to be where our left edge is. Float my right equals x plus width divided by 2, okay? Uh, float my up equals y minus, uh, sorry, height divided by 2, and float my down equals y plus height divided by 2. So that should be relatively self-explanatory since you know how the first one works. Um, now we need to figure out... Uh, now, now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go through uh, all of the sprites for a sprite sprite in world.current world. Now, why is it that we only need to... Uh, check uh, sprites in the... You remember how I said that uh, um, our world that we're using is... Our, our world class is going to have a, a something called current world, and what we can do is we can create other worlds and, and switch them out by simply changing current world to be one of those other worlds, and that's a way, you know, you could preload a level by loading all the stuff into a world object and then saying world.current world equals, you know, whatever world it is you just created. So it's a quick way to, to switch out levels and all that. Well, what if this sprite here that we're talking about, the one that's running this code, is not in the current world, but is in a different world? Why are we comparing it against sprites that are in the current world? Well, because if this code's being executed, then it must be in the current world. See, because current world is the only one being updated, so this code will only be run if it's a sprite that's in the current world. So we already know that current world is the world that we should be checking for these sprites, uh, if that makes any sense, just in case anyone was wondering. Because um, I'd heard someone comment on that before I explained this code, and they're like, well, why is it that you compare it with current world? What if it's a different world? That's why. It'll never be a different world, so don't worry about it. Um, current world dot sprites. Okay. Uh, so for each of those, we need to find their left, right, up, and down, just like these. So uh, we'll go ahead and copy and paste that. We'll just say other left, other right, other up, and other down. 
and then we'll say sprite dot pose x sprite dot pose x sprite dot pose y and sprite dot pose y uh, and sprite dot width sprite dot width sprite dot height and sprite dot height okay um, now here's how you check for a collision if my left is less than I, th I think I'm doing this right I'm gonna check some of my old code real quick um, if you don't mind I want to make absolutely sure I'm telling you this right some code from another game I wrote um, yep that's right okay if my left is less than other right and my right is greater than other left and my down is greater than other up and my up is less than other down okay if this whole thing turns out to be true then we are colliding so we can return return true and if we get past this point uh, if we have not returned true by the time we get to the end then we can return false because obviously we're not colliding with anything now what we're going to do with that is um, I'm going to get rid of this whole colliding thing right here and we're just gonna say if does collide pose x plus move x times delta time I think that's right uh, and pose y so if we're colliding because of our movement on the x-axis then move x minus equals move x and then after that we're gonna say if does collide pose x and pose y plus velocity y times delta time then it's the fault of our up and down movement and velocity y minus equals velocity y now let's run that code real quick and see if it works nope it doesn't oh <laughs> okay you, you remember last time the mistake I made in the sprites we need to go through make sure we're not accidentally checking to see if we're colliding with ourself because of course we're colliding with ourself we occupy the same space as ourself so if sprite does not equal this or sorry if sprite does equal this continue meaning skip this iteration of the loop now everything works okay and notice our collision is more precise But yeah, we still need to check to see if we're touching the ground before we jump. The way we're going to do that is right here where we do the press the jump key. We're going to first say, we're going to put all that inside a new if statement and say, if does collide pose x and pose y plus 1, okay? So that's going to say, if we're one unit downwards from where we currently are, would we be colliding? If so, we'll consider that to be touching the ground. Now, if we press jump and hold it down, we jump repeatedly, but we don't fly up in the air like we did before, because we can, and if, and if I'm tapping it over and over again, we can only jump once, and that's when we're touching the ground. So right now, we've got kind of a bunny hopping thing going on by the fact that we can hold down the key, but other than that, it seems to work out pretty well. Um, if you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, and next time, we'll work on getting the input fixed. See you next time. Bye.